Hi, this is Ben Llewellyn, and today I'm talking about the Welsh England. An englyn is a type of stanza in Welsh and Cornish poetry. It developed over many centuries um, through several forms, but the most common form is the englyn unodl inion. So what is it? The poet Cadwyn Jones wrote a poem in englyn unodl inion form called What's Englyn When It's English? So I'll say that to you now. It's really good. It helps explain about what it is. With rhyme and consonants chiming, in one internal entwining, all sounds and syllables sing, a pattern worth repeating. Can you hear the kind of melody in the the consonants around the vowels there? That's Kunghanad, and that's um, been built into the England over the centuries. Let me break that down for you. Each of these four lines have what's called Kunghanath, or a complex system of internal assonance, rhyme, and alliteration used in Welsh verse. Assonance means identical consonants used to rhyme uh, with vowels between them. I'm going to go through the history of the Anglin now, but first I'm going to color code it for you because I want you to be able to see and hear what's going on without me having to explain it to you because it would take away from you being able to absorb that in a quicker format. So I'm just going to show you. If you get confused about my color coding, just come back to this screen here. Before I went through the history, I just want you to be aware that other types of England exist other than the Anglin Inodal Inyon and that over the centuries it developed many different forms. It's not just one even though the Anglin Inodal Inyon is dominant. So here's just a, a quick flash of those names so you're aware that they exist. <laughs> The earliest recorded Englinion, which is the plural form of England, are from the 9th century, um, from the Juventus manuscript, which today is housed in this place, which isn't even in Wales, but okay. It has three Englin um, in the margins, and it's important for getting how old this type of poetry is. This is just the first which survived, so the tradition we can say is older than this. In about the 10th century, we have more Englinion popping up in various forms in a series of sagas, which were probably part of a larger body of lost prose. Although these weren't written down until later, we get an idea it was about this time. The Englinion were used at points requiring a lot of emotion, like these from Connie Helev. Erir penguer and pengar and shweed, Henoari shell yad lice, a vigam gig garais. Erir penguer and pengar and shweed, Henoari shell yaban, a vigam gig kindalam. And this one from Agaev. Shum awel, shum brin, an oath kafel cleed, chigrid reed, rowed shin. Over the next couple centuries, the England becomes more complex, more uh, adorned, and during the high period of Welsh court poetry in the 12th and 13th centuries, it blossoms into a more ornate form. With a bit of Cunghanad, which I'll get to in a moment, 
Um, here are a couple single England examples from poems in the period, or stanzas, if you will. Maybe on Cadivor, Kida Helaith, Blant, and a Pan Tilch Pentraith, Beyond Bruskian Bryce Garvaith, Beyond Bru Geri Browd Vaith. Here's another example of the prolific poet Kindelu singing to his lost son, Digindelu. Kindelu has more lines of poetry to his name than all of what has survived of Saxon poetry, so he's quite important. And Hunna sod Claude Clare the Lithe, be the Nibithed, or the Gavraith, or the Anal Chavan Adral Chaith, the Ginelu, the Gin Humdaith. A century and a half later, King Hanad, or a complex system of internal assonance, the rhyme and alliteration used in Welsh verse, had taken the dominant role within Welsh poetry and this occupied and reshaped the England too. Here's one England with King Hanad in a poem, or Aldo from David of Gwilym, the new King Hanad's most renowned and remembered poet. O gampai gorae garav, ar ur ererair ai barnav, o rodean amol aroidav, o vernau or thivornav. You can see here how the consonants match around the vowels to create a melody. This is in the very loosest sense of the word Kringhanev. And here it is another from the poet Gitterglin, 150 years later, towards the end of the 15th century. Avank, revor grank, revor crane. Rimen went, rimen adel de vontin. Amul a muggy mal megin. Amoth, thu a myrith teen. What makes this England by Guitar Glen different, apart from the humour, is that it is not part of a larger poem. This England stands alone, and from this point we begin to have more England on which stand as poems alone in their own right, usually through the England in Otolinian form. The tradition of the England never vanished over the next few centuries, but it was not as omnipresent as it is today in Welsh poetry. Until the 19th century, this man, uh, Dewi Wynne or Avion, influenced many poets with his England at the time. It was sort of a, a revival of the England, which brought back the England um, into vogue in Welsh poetry. And it's not really gone away since. It's used a lot in Welsh poetry from the Eisteddfod to memorial stones, uh, graves, and even by local businesses as decoration that Welsh speakers can feel home around and welcome. So back to Catherine Jones's uh, England about what the England is. I hope his words make uh, more sense now that you've seen a bit about the England over the centuries and seen the sounds that are commonly found in them and how they create sounds. He's written this England in Erdl Inyon uh, with Tringhanev in English to explain what the England is. And I'll say it again for you now, now that you've seen a few of them. What's England when it's English? With rhyme and consonants chiming in one internal entwining. All sounds and syllables sing, a pattern worth repeating. Do you hear that now? Does it make more sense? If you have any questions, Please respond in the comments below or send me a message and I'll try my best to answer it for you. And if you want to learn more about it, there's um, Meredith Hopwood's book Singing in Chains. There's a great introduction um, to this kind of thing in English. If you speak Welsh or would you want to see what these have been over the centuries even though you don't speak it, here's a book, Hen Englynion by Gwyn Thomas. It's a really good book. Um, and uh, please subscribe and like this video, and we'll see you soon.